This video is part nine of our series on nerve entrapments. The focus of this video is going to be on the C7, C8 nerve roots, and I'm going to cover the following, the function of the nerve, the location of an entrapment, clinical signs of the nerve entrapment, how to palpate and locate the dysfunction, and tips and strategies to effectively treat it. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Dr. Matt Maggio. I am a soft tissue injury treatment expert specifically for neck, shoulder, elbow, and wrist pain. My focus is on finding and fixing scar tissue and then reducing inflammation from chronic injuries without the use of drugs, injections, or surgeries, which does lead to a significant increase in overall functioning and long-lasting pain relief. I am also the creator of the Peak Method and the founder of the Soft Tissue Treatment Revolution, where we teach overworked massage therapists a better treatment system that will allow you to cut your treatment times by at least 50% so you can stay healthy, avoid that dreaded burnout, and help a hell of a lot more people get out of pain. All right, nerve entrapments part nine, going to be covering, as I said in the intro, the C7, C8 nerve root. If you haven't watched any of the other videos in this training series that kind of build up on each one, I'll link it up top here on YouTube if you're watching it there. If not, I'll also put it down in the description box if you're watching this on LinkedIn or Facebook or anywhere else. So let's get right into it. So the C8 nerve root, the motor function of it is it, it does a lot of things, but it really starts with a lot of things in the flexor component of the arm and the wrist and the, the forearm and everything like that. It covers the long fingers, extensors and flexors. It covers the flexor pollicis longus, flexor digitorum profundus, extensor pollicis longus, the thenar and the hypothenar muscles, and also like the deep intrinsic hand muscles, like the lumbricals and things like that. So a lot of things with like gripping and like fine touch and fine motor movement. Sensory function of the C8 nerve root. So it actually covers a couple different areas in the body as well. One of the really common areas is right back here down deep. And it usually ends up being like really deep into the posterior part of the shoulder into the shoulder blade as well. And even down to that mid thoracic spine as well, when there's some damage to the nerve root or that level of that disc, there's going to be some deep pain in there as well. And then it kind of follows this track as I'm, I'm tracking here down the lateral part of the arm, and then it covers in here as well. And it's really prominent in like the fourth and fifth finger out through there as well. It is a major component in the ulnar nerve. The ulnar nerve actually is, is made up of the C8 and the T1 nerve root. And a lot of times if there's damage in the ulnar nerve, it can be affected by that nerve root as well. And that's the pattern that it typically follows as well. I've seen a lot of clients that come in and they have like a lot of numbness and tingling, like right around that area into the pinky as well. And that can definitely bring to the idea that there is a C8 dysfunction in there. Now, a lot of you might say this, and I get this, I think every time I make a video and I talk about the C8, they go, hey, there's no C8 nerve root. There's no C8 vertebrae. I'm like, no shit, dummy. I know there's not a C8 nerve uh, ver cervical spine part, but what happens is the nerve in there exit. So it comes out between the C7 and the C and the T1, that's called C8. So you're not smarter than me. So don't be a jackass. Little humor for the video. So where does this get stuck? It gets stuck, as I said, in the scalenes. It definitely gets stuck, stuck in there. So in the neck as well as the nerves come out through the nerve root in there, they pierce through the different scalenes. You have the anterior, the middle, and the posterior. I tend to see more of this involvement in the middle and posterior scalene. That's where it gets caught. It gets stuck in there. It gets pulled. Nerves have to make some traction as they go. They eventually get stuck in there, and then it presents with a lot of those problems that you see in a nerve root entrapment. So why it gets stuck? Talk about this all the time. Poor and sustained posture. Over time, scar tissue forms. When scar tissue forms, builds up. Scar tissue forms because the muscle is getting overworked, maybe sitting too much, looking down, staring at their phones, not moving enough. When that happens, doesn't get enough blood flow and oxygen. Over time, the body starts to lay down immature collagen fibers that build up over time and it gets bigger and bigger and then it spreads out and eventually it gets stuck to the nerve. The nerves are built with about 15% of extra slack like a rubber band. Over time, it gets stuck to that nerve and causes some issues. You can also see this with injury and trauma. Maybe someone had a car accident. Maybe they had a lifting injury. Maybe they fell on their head. Who knows? But that can create scar tissue in there as well. And that scar tissue gets bigger and bigger and can also 
get stuck to the nerve or if it got yanked or pulled too hard, maybe they had like a bad extension, hyperextension from their shoulder or something like that, or their neck really got rocked in some position that can cause some issues in there as well. And definitely just some issues from like surgeries, say someone has like history of cancer or something like that, or had neck surgery. When they go in there, they can nick that nerve root a little bit and cause some issues in there as well. So clinical signs of a nerve entrapment associated with this area. Uh, patients with a suspected C8 radiculopathy, what does radiculopathy mean? Basically means it's going down to the arm, into the back of the shoulder, kind of like that diagram that I showed before, something in there, they usually end up having weakness involving the long fingers, the long finger extensors and flexors, which is going to be like in this part in here, in through the I guess you would say the medial side of the arm if we're looking at it from an anatomical position. It's also going to include problems with the flexor pollicis longus, which is going to the thumb, the flexor digitorum profundus, which is all the deep fingers, and extensor pollicis longus, thenar muscles, hypothenar muscles. And sometimes you can see it in the deeper muscles in the hand if it's like a really chronic and long standing. Um, entrapment of that nerve, there can be some motor function dis loss in the hands where they're having trouble like doing fine motor skills and things like that as well. But it's really just compromise of all these deep muscles in here called your flexor group as well. And most of them are controlled by the ulnar nerve as well. And like I said earlier, the ulnar, ulnar nerve starts with that C8 and that T1. So issues in that are going to present with motor and sensory dysfunction further down into the arm. So how to find it. Um, I've been sharing this over and over in these trainings. It's palpation, but your palpation has to be very precise and you want to get precise tension. And basically when there is an entrapment in the nerve roots themselves, when you kind of sink in, you feel it. And when a nerve's healthy, it should have like a little bit of a wiggle and a bow to it. And a lot of times when it's not, you hit it, it's really tender and sensitive to the client that like, Ooh, that, that, that doesn't feel right. And usually what you'll find is all the muscles around there will be very hypertonic. And what happens is they get in this tight protective tension to basically take the pressure off of that area. And they tighten up to protect that. Cause if the nervous system is getting affected, it's going to cause some issues for you as well. That's why those muscles tighten up. So a lot of people think, Oh, they're just tight and I need to stretch them. No, they're tight for a reason. And you have to be able to explain why that tightness is happening is because there is an underlying nerve entrapment going on. So the way I like to palpate this is I have the client laying down on their back supine that's looking up to the ceiling. And I like to tuck the arm down behind that that opens up that nerve root in there, and we can really go in there and start to feel and if there is increased muscle size, sometimes you know, you get someone that has like really, really big traps, and you just can't get in through there. And they got a really thick neck, maybe they even have like a they're overweight and they got a lot of adipose tissue in there and you can't feel it as well. You can also palpate it with them sitting down and then bringing their arm across their body and then kind of opening their neck up. It's not a, it's not as ideal because all these other muscles will, will tighten up as you're palpating it because you're not laying down, laying down is the best way. But if you can't feel it, there are ways to do that. I cover advanced palpations of these videos in, um, former training. So you can go back and look at all those, any of the scaling ones. It's basically the same thing. We started at the four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight. It's just kind of going down from there, but the palpation is exactly the same, same mechanics in there as well. So go back and watch those if you haven't seen them yet. How to effectively treat it. This is the most important part. And this is what everyone wants to do. They want to jump into treatment right away. They're like, ah, just tell me what and where to treat. And that's the problem with most I guess, training and systems out there, they just go here, just start treating. And you don't really understand why the problem's there, why it's happening and understanding the mechanics of the nerve and everything going on. You got to be a clinician first and then a technician second. So number one is slow, precise, and focused. So many therapists out there are just like in such a hurry and they want to do, they got a whole hour of treatment. I talk about that all the time. Our treatments are actually counterproductive and don't get anything done. They make it worse, but they want to try to do everything. They want to treat every single area, every single problem that they have. They want to throw the kitchen sink at it. And the problem is nerves only have a short window where you can go in there and treat them and they don't like to be messed with too much. They want to be freed up and then left alone to kind of heal. I covered the treatment um, demonstrations of these as well in those former um, videos on the scalings and things like that. So go back and watch that. But what you'll see in these treatments is I get proper depth, then I back off a little bit, and then I set some tension. 
And when I do that, it allows that tissue to be really loaded up. And then I feel that tissue slide. You know, a lot of people look at this and they go, oh, this is just pin and stretch or myofascial release. It's not even close to that because all those people are doing in those type of treatments is they're just jamming on it, creating a lot of pain. It hurts like hell. The client thinks you're doing something. You think you're doing something. All you're doing is pissing it off. And it temporarily feels better because you're stimulating some mechanoreceptors and blocking some pain, but it's not actually making a long lasting change and breaking free that nerve entrapment from that scar tissue. Also, you really never want to do more than about three to five treatment passes any more than that is really overkill. And you really only want to treat the area that has the least amount of um, compressibility. That's going to be the area you want. Because if you go in and treat the other ones and they're healthy, it's going to be overkill. It's going to put more pressure in there. It's going to create more inflammation and the client's not going to be in a proper healing environment. And another big thing that we do, and I talk about this in the past videos, is load management. You basically got to get the clients to do less. You know, an injury in the most simplest presentation on one side is load and the other side is capacity. When load exceeds capacity, that's when injuries happen. So us getting in there, removing these nerve entrapments, getting that scar tissue out of there, that's going to cause the nerve to be able to floss better, move better, function better, take some of that tension out of there. But if they go back and continue to do the same things that cause that injury in the first place, it's never going to get any better. So we teach the client like things about how to properly hold their phone, laying down, taking rest, movements in the morning, hydration, all of that. It isn't just the treatment. The treatment is very important. But if the client goes back in between and just trashes everything in between and your work doesn't get any better, they're going to blame you and say, oh, treatment's not working. It's not that it's not working. You have to educate the client as well about what they need to do and not do in between treatments. And you don't have to negotiate with them. Be like, oh, I feel bad. They want to work out. It's like, hey, dude, hey, ma'am, do you want your neck to feel better? This is what you're going to need to do. And this is how it's going to get better. Quit trying to be friends with your clients and, you know, compromising with them be like, well, if I tell them they can't work out or do that, they're not going to get any better. You're like, no, if you keep doing what you're doing, your neck's going to blow up. You're going to be at a surgeon and you're not going to be able to do any of that stuff. So right now I need you to follow my advice, follow my recommendations. So this can get better. That's all I got for you guys. I always appreciate you guys watching the video and all the support that we get. If you like it and you know, all that kind of stuff, go in and download and access our free training modules. We're always revamping them and putting them together and trying to get the most information out of there. And honestly, they're, they're better than I put most paid courses. They're better than any other paid course out there. You're going to get so much information about thinking critically, solving problems, palpating, finding the issues, and really getting the reputation in your areas, being someone that truly solves problems. At the end of the day, if you become a specialist, you fix problems, you're going to get paid better. You're going to have a better life, a better business, a better practice for yourself. And you're going to get that reputation in the area as the person to go to for this type of injury, because you are the best of the best. I appreciate you guys watching and I will see you on the next one. Bye.